All right. So we already talked about the external anatomy of the fish. So now I'm going to dissect this fish and we're going to talk about the internal anatomy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the vent, which is down here. It's also called the urogenital opening. Um, and this is where fish excrete their waste from. And it is also where um, females will lay their eggs and where males will fertilize the eggs from. So we are going to start here. And I'm just gonna make careful cuts. Try not to go too deep. Very bloody. All right, so I have cut open my fish and right off the bat, I can see that my fish is a female. I've got all these eggs that have spilled out of her. And we can see she's got these egg sacs right here. These are the ovaries in the female fish. Okay, I'm gonna cut these out of here. Oh, there's lots of eggs in here. So, you can see what these eggs look like. And a female fish will typically lay 2,000 to 5,000 eggs in one spawning. So each of these egg sacs would have held about 1,000 eggs or more. All right, so now that I've got the ovaries out of the way, I can see I have the spleen right here. It is very dark red because it's full of blood and its job is to store and filter blood. So this is the rest of the digestive system right here. We have the stomach right here. It's this really small J-shaped organ right here. And the reason it's so small is because this fish died after spawning. And so in salmon, after they come back from the ocean to spawn, they actually stop eating. They don't have any more desire to eat because the only thing that they're thinking about the only thing that they that they want to do is reproduce. So they completely stop eating and their stomach will shrivel up like this. So this stomach is empty. This thing right here, this weird spaghetti looking thing, you might also hear it referred to as finger-like appendages. This is called the pyloric cica. And those finger-like appendages bring a lot of surface area to help with the stomach digestion. So I'm going to cut the stomach and the whole digestive system out of here. So here is the digestive system. We've got the stomach, the pyloric cica, the spleen, and then part of the intestine right there. Next in here we've got this big organ. This is the liver. And the liver's job is to digest fats. It's also part of the digestive system. And it is also important for maintaining blood chemistry and filtering out toxins. And it's also quite dark red because it's full of blood. So get the liver out of here. Here we've got the liver. Very dark red organ, full of blood. Up here we have the heart. It's right up under the chin of the fish, kind of right below the operculum, that bony gill cover. And I'll cut it out so you can see it better. So this is the heart of the fish. It is different from human hearts in that a uh, salmon heart is only two chambered, so it's got one uh, ventricle and one atrium, versus a human heart which has two of each. So it's very small and looks quite a bit different to the human heart that we are used to.
back here, we have this swim bladder. You can see it's kind of, it's like a balloon. It's got, still got some air in it. And the swim bladder is used for fish. Uh, that's how they go up and down in the water column. So they will inflate it with air when they want to go up and then let some air out of it when they want to go down. So I'm going to slit this open so that we can see what's behind it. So behind the swim bladder, right up against the backbone, we have this super dark red organ. And these are the kidneys. The kidneys are really important in fish because they help filter liquid waste out of the blood, which is then excreted as urine out through the vent, like we talked about earlier. And uh, in salmon, which are anadromous, which means they go from fresh water to salt water and then back to fresh water, the kidneys are extra important because they aid in something called osmoregulation, which helps them adapt from fresh water to salt water. So the kidneys are what uh, helps get all that extra salt water out of the way so that they can survive in really salty water. That is the majority of what's going on in the main body cavity of the inside of a fish. And now I'm gonna try and open up the head so that we can see the brain. All right, so my fish, its brain, since it's thawed, um, been frozen and thawed, its brain was really liquidy. So this is the most I could salvage right here of the fish brain. Um, it's a really small organ. Fish don't have very big brains. Um, but here are two really interesting little pieces of anatomy. These are called otoliths. Um, they're also called the inner ear bones and they sit uh, right behind the brain in the brain cavity. And they help with uh, direction, navigation, and vibrations. Um, so fish don't have outer ears like we do. They just have these inner ears so they can still hear in a sense, but uh, these otoliths are what uh, feel those vibrations and help them sort of with determining where they are, their position in the water column, that sort of thing. And they're also really interesting because uh, similar to the scales, they can be used to 